Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh. Today we're talking about Hillsong and the fall of Hillsong, specifically. We've talked about Hillsong a few times on here on this channel, also about mega churches in general and the problem with that and the problems that they've created and how they've taken Christianity down the wrong path, in my opinion, and how making pastors celebrities has always been a bad idea. We're going to talk about that today. But there's an account that I've been following on Instagram. I don't really want to tell you what it is, but they created this post and it was about the characters in Hillsong at this point. It was really, really interesting, and I asked that person to help me out with this. They've been doing a ton of research on it, and I asked to do this outline. So today we're going to go through the documentary, what happened with it, sort of, just give you a cliff notes of what went on with Hillsong. And then we're going to go through these characters and kind of what's been happening since the documentary and before that, obviously, has gone down. This shit is not over. Hillsong is in a big pile of poo, and it's only going to get it worse from here. So let's cover it. It's really interesting. And obviously, he's a guy who was an ex-pastor who came from a church just like that. I have insights that some of you might not have. So let's get to it. Okay, if you haven't had a chance, um, I mean, spoiler alert, Hillsong, you know, is going through some shit, <laughs> but you can go watch the documentary on Discovery Plus. It is really good. My wife and I watched it together and my wife is pro-church. She loves Jesus and would love to go back to church and we're still considering it. We're still considering because we love the aspect of church for our kids and having that foundation, but it's just a matter of finding the right church. But um, if you don't, and if you want to know my story a little bit, you can go head over and watch the my ex pastor series, this five part series, um, where I can talk about my church trauma and I was being why I was fired. You can actually hear with your own ears the conversation because I recorded it, which was insane. So that's a really really popular series on this channel. I'm thinking about re upping it. So people that have joined this channel since that, I think I had like 30,000 subscribers when that video series dropped. So I'm thinking about re-uploading it so people can get a fresh look at it because it's a really important topic in my story as well. So we watched the documentary. It was really hard hitting, um, really, really hard hitting by the way. And I, I have in full disclosure, I love Hillsong's music. I've loved it for a lot of years. In the last year and a half of my my tenure as a pastor, I started becoming disenfranchised by church. Okay, and that's the truth. And they, the, I think the, the leadership kind of maybe saw that a little bit. But I was becoming disenfranchised because I was starting to see through the facade of modern church in its modern day format right? That it was just bullshit lies, basically. And it was just about making money and it was about exploiting people and it was about damaging people. And it was about just being patriarchal and everything else. The, the modern church that we see today, like the modern non-denominational church is where we're going to kind of sit here and not all of them, but for the majority are all doing it wrong. And I've said this a bunch of times, specifically about churches like Stephen Furtick and Elevation, because a lot of these churches are very uber wealthy, Right. And there's a church up in Ottawa that I was going to do this big, giant expose on and had all these people were going to come forward. But then I went to the <laughs> I went to the, the trucker protest in Ottawa and they were like, we don't want to talk to you anymore. So I was like, fine. But there's a church in Ottawa called My Church that was a Hillsong church. And I'm probably going to allude to it a little bit here, but it's in, it's very, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when churches who wanted to become Hillsong style, how they changed their behavior and how they ran their churches. It was crazy. It's a church called My Church. And it's in insane. If you ever get a chance, to, there's a thread online somewhere where all the victims of this church called My Church came out and just pfft, the shit that they said about this church is just as bad or worse about Hillsong. And what it made me think was everybody who tries to be like Hillsong, like this, they all failed. They all did this and they all hurt other Christians. They literally destroyed lives because that was that's their MO. They, I mean, they don't want to destroy lives, but they leave this wake of destruction behind them, which is what Hillsong did, okay? In my experience, the wake of... Uh, um, and so that church like that is a very, very telling example. It was like a micro-sized version of Hillsong and what it became. And the pastors are still in the leadership at this church called My Church, okay? And the leadership that hurt all these hundreds of people. I'm saying, and this is a small church, everybody. It's like 300 on a Sunday. And they hurt hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. They left this wake of destruction as a tiny church. So you imagine the wake of destruction that Hillsong has left behind? Okay, so that is crazy what's going on in the modern church and, the, and how they do things nowadays. Now, 
just like a, a, a high level overview of how modern non-denominational churches like Hillsong, Elevation, Bethel, <laughs> and all these other churches, they're all very, very, very similar. And here's how they operate. Okay. They all become big based on one leader. Okay. And that leader is very charismatic, very talented. And those leaders are often driven out of the churches that they were in before because they don't want to conform to the way that church is and they want to be famous, right? They, those leaders all leave their other churches and become huge leaders of their own churches. Carl Lentz is an exception because he was groomed into the person he was in the New York church. And we'll get to that in a minute. But basically my take on modern churches is that these modern churches are built as monoliths, as trophies to the pastors that run them. Look, I love Andy Stanley like the next guy. I do like him. I like North Point. But North Point doesn't exist without Andy Stanley. Elevation doesn't exist without Stephen Furtick. Hillsong doesn't exist without Houston. Okay, the whole Houston empire, by the way. So it started with the, da- the dad of the dad, like the grandpa who was like, who was a SA predator into Brian Houston and then now Joel Houston. We're going to talk a little bit about the whole hierarchy of how that goes down. Lots to, I mean, my brain is going to be like all over the place with this, but this is kind of how these churches are built. And this is why they're set up to fail. Because in my opinion, if you're going to a church because of the leader, you are now, I, you are now idolizing that preacher. If you go because church has good music and you like the worship music or the pastor or the worship musicians, and it's because they're famous and really talented, you're going to church for the wrong reasons, right? And it's this big, crazy cycle because that's what churches will do to draw people in. I worked at the biggest church in my region, okay? We had the best damn music. We had three stages. We had all the looks, the smoke, the lights, and everything else. We did tracks. We were excellent. Our music was really good. The pastor was really good. Well, he's like 185 years old now. It's not good anymore. But he was the reason that church got to where it was. It wasn't because of anything else. So this is how modern era churches work, okay? They draw you in with programs, leadership, or music, Okay. And that's what they, and and some of them monopolize everybody in their towns. Like my, my ex church, $200,000 playground inside that they have. So kids just, they know that drawing kids into the church will bring the adults because the kids want to go, the adults will go, right? It's all this big giant ruse to get its marketing. It's like a mall. It's crazy. It's a, it's a country club. If you go to the right church in your area, right? Most of the people that I encountered at these types of churches were, were not genuine in their faith. There was a lot that were though. Let's be real. There were a lot that went to these places because they liked the growth and they liked the leader, but there were a lot of genuine, but there were a lot of people who just went because it was the place to be on Sunday. And that's kind of what Hillsong is. That's kind of what Elevation is and Bethel and all these places. They become the hot place to be. And if you look at, Ele- uh, if you look at Hillsong in New York City with Carl Lentz, everybody was going because of Carl Lentz. They weren't going because it's Hillsong. Carl Lentz was the best thing that happened to Hillsong before all the scandals happened. And I'm pretty sure that him and Brian butted heads a lot because Carl Lentz was becoming Hillsong's face, right? We saw the pictures of him dressing like a slut. And, uh, you know, we, you, I mean, a lot of people made a lot of observations about Carl Lentz and say, if you dress like this, are you like, there's just nothing going right about that. Another thing about these types of modern churches, and it's almost... 100%. And if it hasn't happened yet, it's about to, it's going to happen eventually is that the leaders, all of them. (laughs) And I'm going to try to put all the pictures up here of all the leaders that have fallen because of moral failings. Almost every single leader of a mega church has fallen because of a moral failing. Some of the biggest pastors, Brian Houston being the most recent, Carl Lentz, that fell because of moral failings, sending their pictures of their dick to people, um, you know, taking things that didn't belong to them from women, you know, in that case. Here's a website from Ranker. Legendary pastors who fell from grace. Okay, Ted Haggard. If you guys don't, there's a documentary, I think it's called Jesus Camp. I think it's what it's called. Go watch that documentary. It was mind-blowing. And I was drinking, full-on drinking Kool-Aid of the Christian Cup when I watched that documentary. And I'm pretty sure that documentary changed me a little bit about evangelical Christianity. Okay? Ted Haggard was... uh, was the guy who ranted against the evils of premarital sex, adultery, and gay marriage. And as Tilly, he was caught in a gay sex scandal in 2006, a male escort named Mike Jones publicly claimed that Haggard had been inclined for years. Not only that, Haggard had allegedly used crystal meth in front of his male lover. So Ted Haggard, again, one of these pastors that preach about the thing, but fell completely into the sin itself. Um, there was Morris Hill with Mark Driscoll. He didn't have a moral failing, but he he was an incredibly insane bully to his, his congregation. He got ousted by his church and then started another church. 
There's Bill Hybels from Willow Creek Church who was uh, accused of being a sexual predator. And that happened. That was a big giant church that fell. I'm not saying every pastor has a moral failing because I know lots of pastors who haven't. But I think the bigger you get, the harder they all fall. And it's just a matter of time before something comes up that they did they shouldn't have done. Locally, there's a church called The Meeting House. Pretty big deal in Canada. And their pastor was called Bruxy Cavey. I've actually met Bruxy a couple of times. Bruxy... Canada's pretty small when it comes to the evangelical world. Bruxy's probably one of the most prolific Canadian evangelical pastors of our time. And he was really weird the way he dressed. He just didn't care. He was super overweight. And he just, he was, but he was a gifted speaker. And they would rent theaters all over Canada and they'd have this, it was a pretty big deal. Everybody thought Bruxy was innocent. And then he just came out. Like, here's, an, here's a religious news service. Bruxy Cavey investigation widens to include two more alleged victims. I think at this point it's up to three or more. So Bruxy Cavey, the disgraced former pastor of Canada's largest church, may have essayed more than one woman, the church told its members. And then he came out and he, he said, yeah, I did it. And then, you know, that's it. Most, it's so crazy that most of these mega church pastors grow in enormous amounts of wealth and almost all of them succumb to moral failings. Almost all of them. It's actually mind blowing. This is from the Christian Post. Mega church founder James McDonald allegedly sought murder for hire, police investigating. This is a little while ago. Police in Illinois are currently investigating allegations that Harvest that Harvest Bible Chapel founder James McDonald sought to hire, find a hitman to commit murder. A subject came and filed a report. We are doing an investigation based on the report. The allegation regarding McDonald's efforts to commit murder were first reported by an independent journalist. So that's just a, a small sampling of what's been happening in the modern church of pastors who are falling and collapsing and everything else. And I've seen it locally. I've seen it elsewhere. There's a pastor at a pretty big church near me. That was the same damn thing with the worship pastor. And so many times, it's so in incredible to me that so many times the wives of these pastors like accept their husbands back and they, they just go on with their lives. And to me, I, I find it crazy because that's what the church fosters. And that's what the church tells women they need to be like. Like that's the one thing that we have. We're like, we need to stay together. Pastors have a really hard time, especially mega church pastors and famous pastors, quote unquote, have a really hard time with this for some reason. I do have seen women come on to me as a pastor. And I'm like, I think to myself, I'm a pastor. Like, do you, you know I'm a pastor, right? And so you, you have to be really careful how you navigate. You're never supposed to be alone with anybody, especially a woman ever, ever inside of a church, ever meeting, never once, never. There are so many rules you have to you put in place if you're going to be a pastor. And it shouldn't be that way, okay? Because it's, it's you are, as a, as a person who is famous, quote unquote, inside even a smaller church, you are still targeted, right? People still want to be with you. It's really weird. And so that's kind of been my experience. And I saw a pastor here do that, but, and you see a lot of wives stay with the, with the pastors that have cheated on them. Right. And it's just, it's, it's amazing because in a lot of the time, the woman is to blame and the wife didn't do what she was supposed to do as a Christian wife, as a pastor's wife for whatever, take that for what it means. I don't, they will never allude to it. They'll never tell you what that actually means, but it means that she wasn't putting out or whatever the case may be. You have to keep your husband happy. He's in ministry, blah, blah, blah. That's what the church fosters. That is an attitude that modern church, not, I mean, the modern church fosters too, not just the old school way, but the modern church does that church, my church in Ottawa, there, there has been some allegations that they would be in team meetings and talking about openly about what kind of sex do you have? What kind of positions do you do? And it's made, made this one person really, really uncomfortable. OK, this happens. OK, they foster this idea that a, a wife is just meant to be like your servant, your, you know, in every single way, sexually and otherwise. And when the wife doesn't fulfill her, her, her Christian duties, then it's OK. And women always get blamed more than men do in this in this arena. Always. OK, it is crazy. And I've seen it firsthand. Right. I've seen women come forward in churches whose husbands cheat on them and the husband doesn't get any doesn't get any flack. Right. But if the woman, if a woman cheats, she's like ostracized and ousted. It is insane. Okay. And I think anybody who goes to church who has seen scandals like this knows what it's like. And they've seen that too. It's very, very telling about churches. Okay. I know I'm all over the place here, but I want to get to this outline. So all that to say, that is kind of how the churches have operated. That is kind of how modern day non-denominational churches have fallen and have come so far, made so many hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars. And all at and all because of celebrity pastors like Brian Houston, all built in their honor, in their name, in their likeness. And it's all fake because they, what, what happens is, is you remove God from that. You're not going to church for God. You're going to church for a pastor. Admit this to yourself. And if you're, if you're brave enough to admit this people who still go to church, okay, what was the reason that you were drawn to the church that you go to right now? What was your reasoning for going? 
that have the coolest shit, good coffee. They have a Starbucks in the lobby. They have a really good kids program. Is the pastor really handsome? Is he really good at speaking? Is your worship, is your worship pastor really, really talented? Do you go because it's a cool place to be? It's a good place to vibe. They have parking, you know, they have week programs for your kids, right? Do they have that? What is the reason for going? If, if none of your reasons were because guess where God was, then that's, that's the problem. And I think a lot of people are afraid to admit it, but you go to church because you're attracted to a certain style of church. That's wrong. I don't know if it's wrong, but it's not the only reason you should go. And as soon as you see the absence of God in any church, you should leave. Okay. Cause there are great churches out there that are all about God and you'll never know the pastor's name. You shouldn't. I'm of the mindset that a pastor should never, ever, ever be famous ever. If the word celebrity comes before Christian, it should never be a thing. There should never be a thing as a celebrity Christian. Now I'm saying there, sh- there can be Christians who are celebrities. You get the difference, right? Right. There are lots of people who are Christian who are famous, right? But you should never, ever be a celebrity because you're a Christian. You've done it wrong. That's called idolatry. Does that make sense to people? Do you guys start to pick that up? That's what churches are built on. They are built on idolatry, but it's justified idolatry because you, it comes with the ruse that you're worshiping God. And some are, don't get me wrong. Some people do go to these churches and they do worship God. God can be found in a lot of places, right? But these churches, God's not found in my opinion. Because it's a church built on lies. It's a church built on exploitation of abuse, of sex scandals, of NDAs, of secrets, and tons and tons and tons of money. And we talked about this at length. Churches who bring so much money in, but are so reluctant to give it out when they need to, to people who actually need it, right? And I've said this and I'll say this. If you go to a church that has one NDA in a file anywhere that has had a lawyer force somebody to sign something so they don't speak up about the church, you need to exit that church. That is the only thing you can do when a church has an NDA. There is, and I've still yet to hear an excuse where an NDA is, is, where an NDA is acceptable anywhere in any church. There is never going to be a reason in any church that an NDA is acceptable specifically biblically, because churches are supposed to be God's places, right? God owns that. Now I'll say that all the pastors of churches will say, oh, this is God's place. We we just work for God. This is all about God. This is built in God's name. That's what they'll say to you. But why are they keeping secrets then? Why are so many churches reluctant to tell you what pastors get paid? Why are so many churches reluctant to tell you what they spend their money on? That church in Ottawa called my church, there's a $50,000 scandal outstanding at this point, allegedly where they were asking, where is this money going? And they were, they were staying mum on where that money is. That's a lot of money. And they were allegedly spending on things like shoes, nice bags. The pastor and his wife, she's also considered a pastor. They live large and their church is small. So could you imagine a larger church? Okay. They spend the money that they, that people tithe to them on things that shouldn't be spent on. Okay. Expensive carpets, artwork, things for the church that shouldn't be a thing. Put it in your community. Okay. So again, I'm going to come back to this. If there exists a church and that church has an NDA, leave that church. I don't care. I I got, I love North Point. I guarantee you North Point has hundreds, if not thousands of NDAs that have been signed. Okay. What are you trying to keep secret? Churches are not allowed to keep secrets is what I'm saying. They are supposed to be forthright with everything that they have. Not only that, they're nonprofit organizations and they have to adhere to a strict set of laws based on your state or country. If you're a nonprofit. Okay. If you're not being forthcoming with what you're spending your money on, you can lose your nonprofit status. Okay. And there's loopholes for all this shit. Of course there is. When my church, when I was fighting my church that I went to for, you know, the end game, I can't tell you what we fought over, but uh, there's a line in their budget that shouldn't, didn't exist before. And that's what they paid for their lawyer. It was like 40 grand that that church paid to try to silence me. Okay. That's crazy. And it was under a line item that didn't exist before. And, it, and people don't question that. And if they do, they have to answer, but not enough people in churches question it because a, honest, a lot of people honestly believe that if you question a church, it's a sin. I kid you not. They think if you tear down a pastor, it's a sin. They think pastors are protected people under God. It's not the case. If anything, they should be more scrutinized. Okay. And again, I will say this last time. If your church has an NDA and you should ask them this, Hey, do you guys have any NDAs? And if they refuse to answer you, then you leave too. Okay. No churches should ever have secrets. I think we can agree on that, right? Maybe I'm missing something. Okay. Sorry, we're getting 30 minutes in already. Friggin' got to get to this thing. So let's get back to this Hillsong post that I saw. So this person has, as a person that served at Hillsong, 
in the past, it lives near Hillsong and is kind of dialed into what's going on and does a ton of research more than probably anybody else that I've ever seen. Okay. So all that to say, I asked a bunch of questions and this is the answers they have. So I'm going to be reading off my screen. I'm not sure. I said, how many people are leaving? What does it look like at these big churches in, in, uh, in, in Sydney, Australia, and all the big churches where Hillsong is? He says, I'm not sure how many people have left Hillsong, but I've heard that the camera people are struggling to film the service because of the amount of empty seats there are. This is an important thing. Elevation does this at all our small campuses. Okay, if you go to an Elevation church that's just started up, they have people who will seat you. You don't get to choose your seat. And they will seat people in the front. Because the cameras needed to look like it's full. And often it is full, by the way. But they also have these, like, I call them woo girls or like go yas. And these people are literally not, are volunteered and they're like go getters inside the church volunteer team where they're at the front and they're like, yeah, amen. And they're really vocal, but they're put there on purpose because they are like that and they are told to do that. That's disingenuous. And that's to me a kind of icky and a lie. That happens at Elevation Churches all over, by the way. And Hillsong and all the other churches do it too. Okay. Also, thousands used to watch church online. Nowadays, the view count of people watching a live service is barely over 100. That's a big deal for Hillsong. And a number of those are hate watchers and the media. Agreed. Hillsong has lost nine of its 16 campuses in the USA. That's huge. We'll do a whole video just on that, okay? I know many staff members have left in the past year. In fact, a whole section of the creative team left, leaving them with no one to come up with and do the hard work of the stage design. And stage design is a big deal at these churches. I remember going to North Point one year and they did this thing called Drive Conference. They still do. And I looked at their stage design. I kid you not, they have five stages and they all have the exact same stage design. And these stage designs are in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they change them every three months. That's crazy. Okay, that's a lot of money. We did that too at my church, but just not on that level. I know, I know that a high profile creative pastor is really unhappy and wants to leave, but says she can't. A lot of people are stuck there because they have no qualifications other than a Hillsong college certificate. Now I got to talk about that for a second. I know a couple people that have been Hillsong and they are sought after in churches. If you say you have a Hillsong college certificate, I don't know about anymore, but if you had one of these, you were hired. You went to Hillsong college, you're in. They would, we hired a Hillsong guy at my church and he was garbage, like terrible. And I was like, I'm not ever hiring someone from Hillsong ever again. Just because you have that moniker doesn't mean you're actually good. But it did hold value for a long time. And it's not it's not accredited for anybody. And I think that everybody who went to Hillsong College is now starting to realize it's not as valuable as it once was. And a lot of them are probably not going to go or leave. Anyway, she said that and have been working there for years. So it would be hard for them to find work in the real world as they've got mortgages to pay. I will say this about people who worked in church um, tech ministries. There's a lot that transfers over to the real world. I promise you, okay? If you're good at video, photography, that type of thing, there are corporations who will hire you for way more than you were making at the church. If you are into the tech side of church, there is a lot of jobs for you out there. Don't be afraid to leave Hillsong. There are so many, I promise you, okay? I'm really talented in, t- in the tech world, and that was my big thing after I left as a pastor. I got hired because of my video skills and my tech skills, okay? And I got paid a lot of money to do it. So don't be afraid to leave churches if you think that that's all the experience you have because there are some real, real world valuable experience that churches do give you if you work in the tech side of things, okay? Just don't tell me you went to a church maybe. And my resume was like, worked at this place. <laughs> I didn't say the church. Hillsong main artists like Taya are going off and doing their own thing. Taya recorded her first solo album is now on a new career path outside Hillsong. I wonder about that. Taya is the one who got famous for doing uh, uh, Oceans. Oceans is probably Hillsong's one of Hillsong's best, craziest songs. So Taya still is with Hillsong. So that's I don't think that's correct. She might be starting to probably exit, but I doubt it. I have heard some things about the Hillsong touring band that will blow your mind. And it's all allegations, obviously, at this point. But being a touring Christian musician, I believed every word of it because I've seen it and more, okay? We're talking drug-fueled alcohol parties, sex scandals, everything inside of every major church, not just Hillsong. Hillsong, Elevation, uh, North Point's traveling band. I'm pretty sure one of their guys that was hired by North Point was sleeping with his drummer's wife. Okay, there's some major scandals that happen. And these people who tour, they're not, you wouldn't know that they were Christian. You wouldn't even know. It's crazy. And they, they are like rock stars. Have you ever been to one of these conferences where these bands are at? They're so inaccessible. They are rock stars and they think they are. They act like they are. And they are. They are, they are not Christian at, at, at any level as far as I'm aware. They just play the music. Okay. They are some of the most hypocritical people I've ever come across in my life. And that's coming from a touring Christian musician with the exception of a couple. Okay. You guys ever heard of Thousand Foot Crutch? Trevor McNeven? With the exception of that guy in that band, 
I, I've rarely come across a larger Christian band that wasn't a bunch of jack wagon assholes. Okay. I promise you that. But Trevor McNeven, salt of the earth. If you guys don't like that kind of music, fine. He's got another band called FM Static. Trevor McNeven, one of the hardest working Christian artists in the industry. Sucks that he was a Christian artist because he could have went big as a secular artist. But anyway, most of them act like that. Most of them party, smoke, drink, and do shit like that on the road because they're bored and they have adoring fans all the time. Guarantee you there's more scandals than you'll ever know what to do with when it comes to Christian music, okay? And again, I'm going to do a whole documentary just on Christian music alone and how it's worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. Okay. It's obviously hits close to home for me. So she says maybe carving a path outside of Hillsong, but I don't know about that yet. Hillsong, because Hillsong has its own record label, right? And it makes Hillsong the most money, the music, by the way. Every time I played a song on a Sunday morning and had a Hillsong song in it, I paid Hillsong through CCLI. That artist got paid, the writer got paid, Hillsong got paid. There was very, there's a lot of money in writing Christian music that churches will play at their church. Like at any given Sunday, Chris Tomlin probably makes 10 grand. I kid you not. Hillsong's board who covered up the Bryan scandals, plus many more, have changed policies and constitutions within Hillsong Church. They got rid of the entire eldership because the elders were the ones speaking out against the cover-ups and wanting Brian to be held accountable. The board now hold ultimate power. That's an interesting video that we might have to do on its own once we get a couple more receipts. But what this person is saying, who knows the inside scoop, is they're saying that the eldership was like, okay, we got to figure this out. We need to like purge this whole um, board and go on. Because if you think about it, everybody knew what was going on. And those who are still there knew and shouldn't be there anymore. If you're part of a major scandal at a mega church, everybody that was in the leadership position at that time should all step down. And they don't because it's about power, not about God. That's very telling. Okay. Sorry. Next. Joel Houston. Okay. Joel Houston, the hat wearing douchebag. I don't like Joel Houston. I don't like Joel Houston's wife. I think Joel Houston and that in all of Hillsong's music was, I used to love it. And then I became disenfranchised when I went to a conference and saw how they acted. Okay. And that's sometimes that's all it takes. But I was obviously aware because I was a touring musician as well. And I knew likely what they were like. And when you see people worshiping God on stage that are likely a bunch of jack wagon assholes off stage, you can't engage anymore. I was becoming disenfranchised because I saw how it was. So, so Joel, apparently Joel Houston didn't really want his job in the church, but he was pretty much forced to by his dad, Brian. Okay. But Joel Houston is as big as an asshole as he probably is in a dick wagon and everything else was a very talented writer, like amazing. Okay. So give him that. This is alleged. So I'm going to say alleged a lot here. This whole video is alleged, by the way. <laughs> Joel has a history of drug use, including cocaine. When he got sent to New York to start Hillsong NYC with Carl Lentz, he and Lentz pretty much lived the party lifestyle. They lived in a wealthy apartment in Williamsburg, New York, and constantly put on parties, bringing in celebrity models and lots of alcohol. Again, that's alleged, but I, I promise you that's going to probably come out if it's true very soon. There's a lot of Christian artists you probably didn't know were addicted to cocaine. Lots. Michael W. Smith, huge cokehead. Lots of artists were cokeheads because they needed, that's how they survived. The, the road life of a touring musician is really difficult, okay? There are so many Christian bands that were such not Christians at all. Reliant K is one of your favorite bands, right? Christians? Reliant K? That guy, the lead singer, even though he's probably one of the most amazing songwriters and singers in the world, he cheated on his fiance with somebody and she came out on a radio show and called him out for it, right? That shit, it happens. And it shouldn't. This is why, again, you should never be a celebrity because you're a Christian. All right, this is confirmed. Joel ended up marrying a Brazilian model living in New York called Esther. She either wasn't a Christian or was new to Christianity at the time and wasn't into the church lifestyle. Esther is a narcissist. And yes, she is a narcissist. You should see her Instagram. She calls herself Queen Esther and all her Insta photos are model shots of herself. She has little if no empathy and can be quite ruthless on her Insta stories. She'll ask questions on her Insta for people to answer and then mock their answers and shame, on, shame them on Instagram. She wrote some terrible parenting advice, which she put under the highlight reel, boss parenting. So she obviously thinks very highly of herself. Esther lives in a glamorous lifestyle in the Houston world. She lavishes her celebrity status, her designer class expensive handbags and celebrity friends. She quickly racked up followers on Instagram after marrying Joel. Their marriage has always been rocky though. Joel managed to quietly slip under the radar before the Lentz bombshells came to light. Alleged. He 100% knew about Lentz's behavior all along and was probably just as much part of it. And this is something I would probably agree with. He was Lentz's right hand or the other way. They were thick as thieves, those two. You don't think that Joel Houston knew the lifestyle he was leading when Joel Houston allegedly was living the same lifestyle? It's going to come out, Joel Houston, and you and your ugly hats are going to go down. And I can't wait for the day. All right, moving on. 
Robert Ferguson. Robert Ferguson is Hillsong teaching pastor. Robert Ferguson is one of the key team at Hillsong Church where he's been on staff for over 30 years. He's passionate about imparting practical life principles from the Bible and his primary responsibilities involve pastoral oversight, preaching, and teaching. Now, Robert Ferguson knows what everything goes on at Hillsong. These high-level pastors know everything that goes on, okay? And the fact that they know and the fact that people stayed in power is very telling, and that means that Robertson that means that Robert Ferguson should have completely stepped down and didn't, okay? Robert Ferguson, this is confirmed. Robert Ferguson grew up in England and has a degree in biology. He said, he said God spoke to him while he was teaching a biology class and from there decided to become a preacher. However, he did not gain any qualifications in theology and has been preaching at Hillsong for 30 years. This is, okay, this is a thing, okay? This is a thing in modern non-denominational churches. They can make anybody a clergy. Half of the amazing speakers and preachers that you hear on the internet today, none of them have proper education. And I'm not saying you absolutely need to, but they don't have any theological education. None of them do like very little. If not, they went to a modern one or they were like mentored by somebody like that. So just take that with a grain of salt. You don't necessarily need to have a theological education to be good at speaking or understanding the Bible, but it helps. Okay. Robert is seen as a theological guru who didn't study theology, uh, the well-read pastor of Hillsong. He reads a thousand books and thinks he's incredibly intelligent. He thinks he's God's gift to the world. This person has a slight slant. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. His preaching is blunt, forceful, and at, towns, and at times downright rude. In one sermon I sat under, he told us that we were all idiots. In another, he told, he told our age group, 25 to 35 year olds, that we need to shut up, sit down, and do as you're told. One morning, he was preaching a sermon and a volunteer or college student was filming it with, it, with the church cameras, which she was required to do. When she came closer to take a snap just doing her job, Robert shamed her in front of the whole church. He told her she was in his face and to get out of his face, and he ordered her to walk out of the church, which she did, completely embarrassed and shamed. So, and that's kind of like a Mark Driscoll style teaching where they're like unapologetically assholes and they think that that's like endearing as a pastor. No, no, that's, that's lame. If you force someone to walk out embarrassed and shamed from, a, from any sermon you've ever done, uh, you're a complete asshole and... Uh, you're going to be judged very harshly for that. Another time, a volunteer was told to bring him water while he was on stage. He became an absolute diva about it and yelled at her in front of the church because she, he did not need or want water. This guy sounds like a right gem. Twat. Every Hillsong song passes through Robert and his wife before it can be played and sung on stage. Robert informs them whether their songs are good theology. I've actually heard them say this live at one of those events I was at. Even though he doesn't have a theology degree, he has all the power to say yes or no to any song anyone creates at Hillsong. You mean, imagine how many Hillsong writers have tried to like become famous through their songs and he just said, nah, I don't like theologically. Again, you don't have to literally be a the theological major at a university to be theologically sound, but if you have no formal theological training at all, where do you get it from? From your own biases and your own take on the Bible. Unless you're some kind of brilliant genius, that's really difficult. Generally, your theology is created by many people imparting their wisdom into you. Okay, theology doesn't come from one person and it shouldn't. It should come from your own readings and it should come from trusted leaders around you imparting their theology into you and you kind of creating it from that. Sounds like he had none of that. Robert name drops a lot, talks about the massive Reinhardt bonk events he went to, how he was asked to come on stage and pray to altar calls in these mega events and how everyone got saved because of him. If you've ever said the words people got saved because of me, you're an asshole and you should repent. Ironically, Hillsong always asks Robert to preach when there's a crisis. <laughs> Robert thinks he's the expert in spirituality, emotion, emotionally, and practically guiding people through a crisis. His advice is terrible. Well, apparently, uh, so, Robert Ferguson, you are a twat. Lord Toggs is the pioneer of Young and Free. And Young and Free, man, I'm not going to lie. Their music is good. I don't care. It's so good. They're so talented. Okay, sorry. Together with her husband, Peter, they pastor the youth ministry of Hillsong Church. Laura is a visionary, much like her father, Brian Houston. Again, don't do this. Churches, okay, this is a thing. You should never hire wives, husbands, kids inside of a church. That is a no-go forever. I'm sorry. That is so ridiculous. In my church, that happened a lot. They were hiring wives. And, and so like the, the executive pastor and his wife, she's a kids ministry pastor and he's the executive pastor. They're both terrible. Okay. At everything. Just delegated everything to everybody and didn't do shit. They were hardly there. They left at like two o'clock every day. They were terrible. And they're pulling in something like $145,000 a year from that church into one household from that church. It shouldn't happen. Okay. It's bad because if a scandal goes down, you have to get rid of both of those people. Okay. You just don't do it. It's dumb. 
but they did all the time. So she's Brian Houston's daughter. Of course, of course she is. Laura Toggs, daughter of Brian and Bobby, a real princess, spoiled, gets what she wants. Laura has no qualifications and has worked for Hillsong Youth since she finished school. She started the youth band Young and Free and they've recorded numerous albums. I wonder if that, is she right? She's good then. Sorry, there is a musical talent inside the Houston family that cannot be denied. So we'll say that, okay? She's very insecure and she always has to be the center of attention. Sounds like the entire Houston family. Laura started something called the secret garden, which to this day, no one really knows exactly what it is. Basically a social media influencer thing. Insta is at the secret garden TV. That's all about her. She talks a little positive body image and posts selfies, flower pictures, and her own pieces of writing. Laura has been on a rampage to attack the media and encourage her followers not to listen to anything else other than what Hillsong tells them. She spiritually manipulates people to never criticize or question anyone at Hillsong. Spiritual manipulation, spiritual abuse is rampant in modern day non-denominational churches. Rampant. And people take it because they think they're serving the Lord, but they're being abused and they don't even, most of them don't even know it. It's crazy. She is always the victim during COVID restrictions. She put on a youth summer camp music festival with disregard for COVID protocol. No masks, no social distancing. Sean Foyt intensifies. While musicians around the country had to cancel their own concerts, this made national international news. Laura then went on to Instagram to express her disgust at the media and to paint herself as the victim. Of course she did. All oh, these rich ass douchebag kids. During color conference a couple of months ago, Laura preached a sermon about how over the last few years she has chosen this over that and also claimed that this was also the story of Hillsong, that they were a faithful church and had chosen the following. Here's what they chose. Forgiveness over bitterness. What about the people that you, um, what about the victims of Hillsong? Did you choose forgiveness for them? Purpose over popularity. <laughs> Really? You've got to be kidding me. Of all the cool kid bands in Christian world, Hillsong is the top of the top. They are Reg Regina George. Okay. They're Regina George. Yeah, I said Regina. Humility over pride. False. Look at humility over pride, right? Look at your pastor, Carl Lentz, or look at this other pastor in the picture he sent. Is that humility over pride? Is it? Is it really? Look at Joel Houston's wife. Is that humility over pride? Oh my God. You can just shut this down like this. Are they serious? Gentleness over arrogance. Are you kidding me? The arrogance of the pastors saying, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not stepping down. I'm not doing that. That's arrogance. Okay. Brian Houston is arrogant. You've got to be kidding me. Love over hatred. Uh, maybe. I mean, they hate the media who uncovered this shit. Understanding over confusion. No, uh, 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 uh. Modern non-denominational churches thrive in confusion. How much do you know personally about your modern non-denominational church? What secrets do you know? What inside workings do you know? How they make decisions? How do you know any of that? That's confusion. Church, they won't tell you shit about how they make decisions. They'll say it's a team effort and all this stuff, but it's like one dude making the choice. Okay, mercy over judgment. Okay, She's just judged the entire world for coming after her papa. Compassion over difference, lie. Presence over absence, lie. Again, there's just, just buzzwords that churches will, we choose these things and it's all a bunch of shit ass lies. Respect over gossip. Okay, I think this one, Although if you think about this for a second, respect over gossip, more like secrets over gossip. So they didn't give away the inner secrets of the shit that was going down because they probably considered it gossip, right? They're like, no, we can't say anything that's gossip. But the truth matters, guys. Gossip is different than the truth. If you're gossiping to slander somebody, that's gossip, right? But if you're coming out and telling the world about some behavior that went down that was likely had victims in it, that's not gossip, everybody. That's justice. That's, that's being forthright. That's, again, that's what they'll spin that. They're like, oh, you can't say that's gossip. Oh, that gets me up because I know, I know churches do that. Obedience over desire, submission over rebellion. Surrender over control. <laughs> Did they really say that? Are you kidding me? Surrender over control. Do me a favor if you go to a church like Hillsong. Try to join the worship team. See what happens. See how much control they have. If you don't look the part, you might be a little bit overweight. You know, mm -mm, you're not in. If you don't look again, if you have to look and sound the part, if you don't, you're gone. There's so much control in these churches and likely from the top 1% of leadership, so much micromanaged control. And I mean, I want to say in every church, there's in 99% of churches, there's a, a modicum of over control from a, a very small select few of the people that run it. Consecration over malice. Okay, I can't even read them all. It's making me sick. Friendship over enemies, tenderness, being soft over being harsh, generosity over self, just generosity. eh? Yeah generosity okay are there still poor people in the communities of the churches there shouldn't be if you make that much money the end all right then when brian scandals leak he ended up resigning laura wrote a post on instagram again standing up for her amazing dad with no regard to the victims that's the thing everybody when you do this look you should stand up for your family you should right but maybe silently specifically if they're 
celebrity Christians because there are victims here. So if you come out for your family against victims, that is not Christian. That is the antithesis of Christianity. You are not regarding the victims at all. All you can do is silently support them and you should. Okay, depending on what they do. If they murder somebody, maybe you shouldn't. I mean, you should, again, you shouldn't support anybody who victimizes anybody, but again, family, you know what I'm saying, right? But you, have, if you have no regard for the victims and you only come out in support of your dad who was a complete and utter, you know, rusty dickhole, then you, you've lost everything. You've lost the plot always. And painted herself and her family as the victims. Of course she did. She told everyone how she was tempted to publicly express her grief, but has chosen to take it privately to Jesus instead. But wrote a whole public Instagram post about it. I'm taking this to Jesus. But before I do, I want to give you guys like a little high-level overview of what I wanted to say to him. Describing again how she's taking the higher road. Oh my God. If you guys have ever met any, any pastor's wife in this type of church, that's her right there. They're all the same. And I mean, the pastors are gross too, but this is like, I can see this person. I, I can see what she looks like. All right. Now we got Bobby Houston. Okay. Let's see what Hillsong says about Bobby. Bobby Houston, co-global senior pastor at Hillsong Church. <laughs> Just making up titles. Co-shoe collecting, expensive purse wearing pastor's wife with really, really nice teeth. Alongside her husband, Brian, Bobby Houston serves as a co-global senior pastor. <laughs> of Hillsong Church. Their influence has been felt and appreciated across the... I don't want to hear read that shit. It's a bullshit lie. All right. This is confirmed. She is always about looks. Why? I mean, yeah, of course. Bobby has held a very patriarchal traditional view of women, but has somehow turned that into something sexy. In 2003, Bobby produced some teaching tapes for women where she advised them to stay fit and good looking so they can satisfy their husbands in bed and boast about their great sex life. This is very true in a lot of modern day non-denominational churches. Very true. I said that about my church in Ottawa. Very true. Women are, women are told to do this. Not just like coerced. They're told, do this because your husband needs this, needs you to be this for them. That's crazy, everybody. But no mention of the, da- of the dudes who look like a bag of smashed assholes all the time. Generally overweight, disgusting pieces of shit. They don't say anything about those dudes staying nice for your wife. They don't say anything like that. It never, ever, ever gets passed over to that. That's patriarchal. And that comes from purity culture as well. Women are, it's, I, the more you see it after you leave the church, the, this most, the more disgusting it gets. Okay. It, quote, if I carry weight, I feel like a retard. How are you going to do anything to surprise your man when you need a hydraulic crane just to turn over in bed? Oh my, she said this, this is a quote. She says on the tape, she told women to keep up their pelvic exercises to ensure their plumbing bits were in working order. I know why men are taking their wives to these churches, by the way. This is disgusting. These types of conversation inside church should never, ever happen. Okay? It shouldn't be a thing. And again, that church in my church, I'm going to go back to that every single time. They had conversations like this all the time with new people. And I had someone speak out to me and said, I felt so uncomfortable with this. This is the crazy thing I've ever heard. And they just encourage it. They, this is it. This is pressure on women. Like they needed more pressure. Already second class citizens in church, in, according to the Bible, than this. She even recommended women have plastic surgery to please their husbands, but are against trans people, by the way. We need to be good at sex ourselves so that if the world comes knocking, we can tell the story of God in our lives without being lured or untruthful. I have a great marriage and I have a great sex life. So what she, what she means by the world comes knocking is when women come to, to your husband, they can say, no, nah, I have everything I need. That's what they're saying here. That's what she's telling women. That's their responsibility. Guys, that's insane. That's <laughs> that's like cancelable insane. Bobby Houston invented the hot pastor's wife. She was all about the fashion and the boob jobs. She promoted this outdated and narrow role of what it was to be a woman. It was all about Disney princesses, exotic dresses, fashion, flowers. She always commented on women's looks. Doesn't she look stunning? She'd always say as another woman came on stage and designed her clothes and expensive shoes. Bobby presents herself as this ditzy blonde on stage that ends every sentence with hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Can I get amen, everybody? Ugh. She acts like an oblivious, kind-hearted, compassionate person. In real life, she's not. She never mixes with the congregation. They, none of these people do. She's way too famous to talk to the plebs. She has her own private car park, her own drivers, her own PA, her, her own high-profile woman to carry her handbag for her. Bobby spends all her time in the green room being waited on. I mean, she is the queen of all queens. She's created a whole brand that she profits off with sisterhood and color conference. She hangs out with her elite group of other wealthy women preachers from around the world, enjoying five-star hotels and business class flights. She calls herself Mother Dove. 
maybe 20 years ago. She's complicit in everything that has happened in Hillsong. Yes. She knew about her husband's inappropriate behavior with other women and stood by him. This is, again, this is, this is standard knowledge of most pastor's wives. It's so sad. When the media were publishing stories, true stories about the Houston and Hillsong, Bobby was throwing fits in staff meetings. She said to everyone that Hillsong was being attacked by witchcraft and that the media and other people were on a witch hunt to destroy Hillsong. Well, Bobby, if you want to call yourself a witch, I'll agree with that. Witch. She also told them after Brian stepped down due to his inappropriate behavior that, that they needed to publicly pray for Brian in church, which Phil and Lucinda did. I remember watching that video, actually. The personal attacks on Christians and personal attacks on the church are act, actually an attack on your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But we have an advocate in heaven and we stand as your church, as your body of believers, and we raise up our hands alongside Brian and Bobby, and we hold up their hands as Aaron and her did, and we are believing that your kingdom will come and your name will be glorified in Jesus' name. And everybody said... After Brian permanently resigned, the board fired Bobby. Boom! See you later, Bobby! This only happened this last week, and it's her. And it, it was in her contract, though, that if her husband did blank, then she would also have to step down. This is why you don't hire your kids, your wife, everything. This is, stop it. Churches, stop doing this. Everybody sees through that. She then took to Instagram to say how callous and cold it was of the board to fire her. She claimed that her husband and her had been living in the trenches all these years in their multi-million dollar homes across the world, in the trenches. God, you can't get more trees than that but the board likely had this opportunity and probably wanted to fire her a long time ago the board hated bobby that's it but the board are just as complicit and the board need to be fired as well but they they took immense pleasure allegedly in firing bobby they probably had a costco slab cake afterwards and were like yeah coffee and coca-cola and strippers coke phil dooley let's take a look at phil dooley Phil is the lead pastor of Hillsong Church, Cape Town, alongside his wife, Lucinda. Together, they served as youth pastors of Hillsong for many years. A gifted communicator, Phil mixes blend of humor with... No, he doesn't. All right. Phil Dooley has always been a suck up to the Houstons, of course. Always a yes man. He was surfer back in the day and has not changed his surfer looks. We can tell. Chill with the sunshine, dude. You're going to get skin cancer. A hundo. Get some sunscreen, Phil. Phil and his wife, Lucinda, moved to Cape Town in 2008 and started Hillsong in South Africa. They've been pretty under the radar most of these years. Last year, he and Lucinda were asked by the Houstons to step in as interim global senior pastors of Hillsong. We just read that at the beginning that they've left Hillsong. As Brian stepped down, initially only for the next year, Phil Dooley knew about Brian's hotel incidents of 2019 pretty much ever since it happened. All right, so if Phil Dooley knew this, Phil Dooley should step down. Anybody who knew of the sin of Brian Houston and held it secret from their congregation and from the world, step down. There's no, that's black and white. You don't get to be like, ah, yeah, yeah. nope, you step down. If you knew and you keep it, if you kept it hidden from your flock that you were leadership over, you step your ass down. Get away from that shit because you just tainted it and you are now toxic and cancerous to God's mission. And also he knew about Brian's alcoholism and refusal to cooperate with any disciplinary action. Here's Brian Houston thinking he, he, he's above disciplinary action. Again, this is all these pastors. They think they're above disciplinary action because the church belongs to them. That's what they honestly believe. Yet in the handover, Phil told the church that everything he knows about leadership, he got taught by the Houstons. He praised the Houstons publicly and got everyone to pray for Brian's innocence and vindication. I saw that in an upcoming court case. As Phil preached and led services over the next few weeks, he never failed to cry on stage and pull at the heartstrings of the church over one thing or another. One time, a couple of months ago, Phil threw a spat about the upcoming documentary on Hillsong. He said, and he said, quote, sadly, there's a documentary coming out about our church soon. Surprise, surprise. And that picture it paints is far removed from, I believe, the truth of who we are as a church. There are, there are those who are attempting to hurt the church. Uh, stop calling it the church. They're attempting to bring down corruption. If those producers truly wanted to do a Hillsong expose, I would like to introduce them to a place called Timbla 2. I don't know what that means. Phil then puts up a picture on the screen of black South African children with disabilities who Hillsong gave next to no money to. The school these children attend was not started by Hillsong, and we pretty much never hear about the school ever. But this was what Phil was using to try to convince us what Hillsong is really about. You would know that because then that's what Hillsong would be known about. But what do you know about Hillsong, everybody? People who don't go to church who are in this, in this video right now. What do you know about Hillsong? Music. Money, wealth, power. You don't know anything about that shit. 
He was very emotional as he did his heart-wrenching speech. Phil then cried during the emergency staff meeting where he told everyone that they've been keeping some scandals of Brian's hidden from them. He cried at the church that Sunday facing the congregation and trying to explain himself and what's happened and what they're going to do about it. He cried at the next staff meeting. Phil, the tears ain't working, bro. Step down, resign. I'm not sure he's done that, but you should. You're an asshole. All right, let's get to Brian Houston. The big dog. The big dog. Brian Houston. You dick. Brian is the ultimate narcissist. In early Hillsong days, he went to the USA and was inspired by the prosperity gospel. And if you guys are unaware of what a prosperity gospel is, it is this thing that has been like manipulated and coerced and toxified in modern day Christian ministry where God wants you to be rich and wealthy. And if you're not, you likely have sin in your life. You need to be super rich. And, and the pastors use this theology, which is not, by the way, it's not, to buy private planes, to have multis, hundreds and hundreds of millions and millions of dollars to, you know, like Joel Osteen. Okay. That guy has more money than he'll ever know what to do with in his entire life. Okay. That shouldn't be a thing ever. And they justify Creflo Dollar, TD Jakes, all these pastors make hundreds of millions of dollars and they justify it by saying, this is what God wants for me. It's crazy. It is so absolute the opposite of what Jesus preached when he was here. And, and, and they, they, will, they will only be able to pinpoint through proof texting that it's what God wants you to do, right? It's so bullshit lie. And I, I, of even growing up in churches, okay, I always hated prosperity ministry. I was never a part of a prosperity ministry church, but didn't realize it was inadvertently giving them money while using Elevation Music, Hillsong Music. All these churches are prosperity. They cannot justify their life and the money that they bring in biblically. It's impossible. And the fact that they are the biggest churches in the world is very telling because just like, again, these influencers that have crazy stands, those crazy stands want to be like that, right? Or they want to justify their lifestyle. So they go to churches like that. Uber wealthy people go to churches like that. Justin Bieber went to Hillsong because Justin Bieber wants to love Jesus, but also wants to be okay with being, you know, incredibly wealthy and not have to do anything with it. Okay. Very, very telling. He was inspired by prosperity gospel. This changed the whole course of his church. Brian became obsessed with money. He wrote a book called You Need More Money, and he began to build his own personal wealth and the wealth of Hillsong. Brian splashed cash in Hillsong like nothing else. He spiritually manipulated people to give large amounts of their savings to Hillsong, promising that God would bless them in return. That is literally the MO of these pastors who preach wealth and prosperity theology. They tell you, if you give, God will give you tenfold. You give the seed, God will plant the seed and grow the fruit. You'll bear the fruit. Right? They'll say, you give money, God will give you way more than you'll ever be able to give. And it's a bullshit lie. Garbage lie. Though I do believe that if you are generous in your giving, that God will bless you. I do believe that. I just don't think that these pastors are saying it properly. Right? If you are generous with you in the name of Jesus, I feel like you're going to be living a good life. Not, And that doesn't mean money, everybody. That's where they get it mistaken. It means you're going to live a very whole life full of just, full of holiness. Okay, it doesn't mean money and cars and airplanes. It has nothing to do with that shit. He started a group called Kingdom Builders. For anyone that donated more than a certain amount of money each year to Hillsong, these people got special treatment and were taken on annual retreats. Brian purposely chose the most expensive buildings in different cities for Hillsong to purchase because he had celebrity fame attached to them. For example, they spent $23 million on a famous venue in Melbourne, Australia called Festival Hall to host their church services. This was purchased during the first COVID lockdown where so many people were struggling financially having lost their jobs. And you guys, if you know anything about Australia and the lockdowns, shit, that's a bigger impact. All Brian was interested in was expanding his property portfolio and increasing his wealth. Yep. Yet he painted himself as a humble pastor who was being persecuted by haters in the media. And no, and even his own congregation must have seen through that bullshit. He demonized anyone who disagreed or spoke out against Hillsong Church, calling them troublemakers, bitter, vine-spoiling little foxes. You take that back, you cotton-headed ninny-muggin. Brian was very controlling. With his wealth, he backed himself up with lawyers. Whenever he was accused of anything by any victim, he would threaten them with his lawyers. Churches, again, guys, I need to come back to this. Churches do this. They will hire lawyers to scare the shit out of people. The 10 people that were fired before me at the church I worked at, all of them, every single one of them, were threatened with lawyers. Churches shouldn't be able to do this, everybody. There, if you're a nonprofit organization, you shouldn't be able to sue people for speaking at about, against what you're doing inside the church, especially if it's true. Crazy how much churches spend on lawyers, by the way. One of the men that Frank Houston, which is Brian's dad, essayed as a boy, spoke out about it in the media as an adult. Brian then intimidated him with lawyers. He never apologized or showed any care to any victims in the church. And that's in the documentary. It's a big deal. 
think you only gave him like ten thousand dollars or something like that. Brian lived the elite, untouchable celebrity life. He never mixed with the congregation. Again, anybody who goes to one of these churches with a pretty famous pastor, try to meet with them, try to talk to them after a service or whatever. Most of them have police that walked into their vehicles have security. That should never be a thing. He spent all his time in the green room being waited on with, with his wife. <laughs> he flew all around the world in business class quite impulsively, as often there was no need for him to do that, but of course spent Hillsong money on his flights. Brian stayed in luxurious five-star hotels, ate at expensive restaurants, all paid for by the church. Again, I've been in a church, even the church that I was at, like we went on conferences to, to North Point Church, which probably cost upwards of $15,000. They paid for all of our food. We stayed at hotels, we all our flights, everything else. Look, I get the training aspect of everything, but these churches earmark so much money for this type of thing. Churches waste so much money. <laughs> it's like the government. When he was, and it is like, cause they get tax-free status. When he was forced into hotel quarantine during COVID, he kicked up such a stink about not being in a five-star hotel that the police commissioner at the time called him an ungrateful twat. <laughs> Brian was then moved to a five-star hotel to finish the rest of his quarantine. Oh, Brian. Cue sad music. Brian, <laughs> were you at a four and a half star hotel? <laughs> was the breakfast not good? Did they have Texas shaped waffles? <laughs> Finn. Off, asshole. Brian always needed to be the center of attention on the platform. He thrived off crowd hype. In fact, he would get angry at his staff if they didn't shout their amens at him loud enough. He was all about the celebrity life and gave celebrity special treatment in Hillsong, often putting them on platforms so he could boast about famous people Hillsong had reached, including major politicians. Brian has a large ego. Behind the scenes, he was drinking heavily and abusing his sleep and anxiety medica medication to get high. He sexed a female staffer who made a complaint and resigned. She made the complaint and then resigned, by the way. He also spent 40 minutes drunk and high in another woman's hotel room the last night of Hillsong Conference 2019, which is in the documentary. 40 minutes. He paid both women out of his own pocket alleged hush money. He was an absolute hypocrite in that he would preach one thing on stage and convince everyone he was the amazing perfect pastor and then not live what he preached at all. This is every pastor. <laughs> I mean, even if it's not a moral failing, there's no such thing as a, as a pastor who is good. We're all bad people, by the way. Brian refused to cooperate with any disciplinary action the board gave him and only ramped up his platform, time, and social media presence. When he was charged with co concealing ch child essay offenses, he was allegedly required to step down from all boards he was on. Brian initially refused to do this. Why, Brian? Why? Again, if you are a Christian and you can't even humble yourself before God for your sins, why? Instead, he took over all the preaching and leading of staff meetings. I know this type of pastor. I do. He yelled at his staff for their low morale, yelled at them for being too quiet in sermons, yelled at them for not being passionate enough. Eventually, he did step down and promised to step aside from all forms of ministry until the court case was over. However, he still regularly posts on social media spiritual advice for his hundreds of thousands of followers. So again, he couldn't let go. Then finally, when his scandals became public, he permanently resigned from this position. This is a long one, but it's worth every word. I can go on forever about church life because I lived this. At its core, the top of the top of the top reap all of the benefits inside of a church, okay? There is hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to be made as a celebrity pastor, okay? Again, it should never be the thing. I will always say this. You've heard me say it a bunch of times, but for those of you who are new, if you go to a church, okay, that has poor people in the congregation, maybe they have a little bit of debt, maybe they need some groceries, maybe they are struggling some way, can't pay rent, whatever, don't have a job, something, right? But your pastor lives in the lap of luxury. Leave that church. Because a church's job, in my opinion, is, is a place where Christians gather to help one another to worship God. But churches have become a place that, be, that resembles a country club instead. They become the popular place to be. They become the, the hip, awesome place that go on Sunday that, oh, you go to that church, it's really cool when I go. And you invite your neighbor and they come with you. And it's just like, it's shallow as shit. The church needs to reset completely. I mean, all denominations of Christian church need to completely shut their doors and go back to the way it was originally intended to be, which was a gathering of believers to worship God. Churches have become almost too big to fail. They, they sponsor politicians. They use their platform to elect politicians. They donate to political platforms, even secretly sometimes. 
they hold almost no one accountable unless there's no option otherwise. There are so many secrets inside churches around the U.S. and Canada you'll never know about because they'll keep it secret until they can no longer keep it secret. They will. Hillsong, they kept everything secret. Leadership who knew all about this stuff and keep it secret should all step down. Look, I don't think that they kept it secret what happened to this kid because the police, I think, were involved. The parents knew, so it wasn't kept secret from the parents or anything like that. And I think justice, I don't know if anything really happened, but they kept it secret from the rest of the congregation because none of their damn business is what they think, right? So um, that's, that's what happens with these churches. There are so many scandals in churches and so many are hidden and locked tight under NDAs. I want you to ask your church, honestly, anybody who goes here, who, who even thinks that I'm a complete a-hole for the way I talk about church. I want you to go ask your church, send an email to the top leadership of your church, executive pastors, and say, does this church that I attend and give money to and tithe my time and money to, do you guys have any NDAs that you have had people sign in the past? Very interesting to see what they would say to you. And if you ask them why, I would love to know the reason why some of these churches think it's okay to have that. Crazy. Okay, that's not the end of Hillsong from you guys. I know this is a long video, um, but we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about the Hillsong churches that have all kind of stepped away um, or have fallen in wake of this. I think this is the end of Hillsong. I honestly do believe that. I don't think they're going to come, come out from this because of the reason that they fired their elder board, right? And they shouldn't have done that. And the, the, the leadership that knew about everything is still in leadership at Hillsong. They have not learned a lesson. They have not been humbled. Okay, they have not repented. And God is not going to let that happen. I honestly believe that the, the modern day collapse of non-denominational churches like this is because God has just had a hundred and is, is because God is just done with it. God has his way of doing justice. And these churches will say, this is the Satan attacking us. It's a witch hunt. I think you're mis I think you're totally. And I think you know this too. This is God's work. God is not having it. You guys and all, he knows your heart. He knows your scene. He knows everything. And the church, the modern day church, the way we see it now is rampant with this type of behavior. It's just a matter of time, everybody, before they all start falling. People are starting to get bold and starting to realize that it's actually not a sin to come forward when you're a victim because the church has fostered that and have told people that. And people inside churches, I've had people even from my church who call me out like, you should never say this stuff. I've had friends close to me say, I should never have done that. That's just like a sin. People honestly believe that if you call out churches and people who are men of God, that it's a sin. And the church wants you to believe that. But people are starting to wake up to that shit. And it's just a matter of time before all of these churches suffer the same fate. I, none are going to be left behind. I promise you. It's all coming out. Stephen Furtick, I honestly believe is next. Guy's son has like hip hop records, talk about sex, drugs, and shooting and all this shit. And it's like, everybody's cool with that? No, 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 no. It's coming out, buddy. It's coming out. You and your roided ass are going to fall eventually too. I, it's coming out. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Because it's justice for victims. I do that. This is what this channel is kind of about. There are so many victims that have suffered because of churches. Spiritual abuse, SA, okay? Like abuse and all kinds of levels. Hurt, like been cast out because of sin they might've done all that kind of stuff. There are millions of victims of churches who are now starting to be like, that wasn't right. And we're, we're made to believe that they were the ones in the wrong. Oh, it's going to get crazy. Everybody take a deep breath. It's a big video. Incredible. We're going to keep covering this. Make sure you go watch that documentary. It's really, 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 really eye opening. Really good. Um, let's see if this video stays up. Maybe I'll get sued. Anyway, uh, if you go to a church in Ottawa called My Church, stop going to that church, please. You guys are amazing, incredible, and valuable, and I thank God that you're here with me, especially those who don't go to church who like to listen to this stuff and understand it. And for those of you who do go to church, understand that not all churches are like this. I know that. I mean, the small churches who don't have celebrity pastors aren't really like this. I hope not anyway, but it's really worth diving into the shit that your church has hidden. Because if you're if you are serving and giving to a church that has scandals and that keep that has victims in its wake and are being silent about it, you should you should not honor that church with your presence. Okay? And I think you're gonna be very surprised at how many there is. Not kidding. So anyway, don't forget your value and your worth, and I will see you tomorrow.